everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're calling from. Welcome to the September AETC program eLearn committee call. It is just 1 o'clock, um, and I think we'll just get started And as folks start to uh, join the call. Um, um, we have um, online audience response system applications as a topic for you today. Um, our speakers are Clint Wibble from Southeast AETC and Jessica Price from the Bay Area North Coast AETC. I am Judy Collins um, from the AETC National Coordinating Resource Center, and I will be facilitating this call. Um, just um, a few housekeeping items before we get started, just to remind you that this is a 45-minute call. Um, I want to remind everyone to please mute your speakers to minimize interference and feedback. Um, also to remind you that if you need to take another call, please do not place us on hold. Rather, if you could hang up and call back, we would appreciate it so that we can avoid hearing your hold music. Um, I typed in the chat box um, that this will be an interactive discussion um, and our speakers are looking for your engagement. So, so if you could have your cell phones or mobile devices handy to join in and, and participate, we would appreciate it. Uh, feel free to enter your questions into the chat room during the presentation or you can hold on to them um, for the end of the presentation where we do have some time reserved for a Q&A session. Um, as always, the um, presentation will be recorded and is being recorded and the slides will be posted to our website after the call. So our learning objectives for today are um, to review Mentimeter and Poll Everywhere ARS applications. Um, some of you may already be familiar with one or both of these. I first learned about Mentimeter on our last eLearn call in which Clint was also a presenter. He's very popular. Um, and he used Mentimeter in his presentation, which I thought was pretty cool. And then um, in August, I attended the Ryan White Clinical Conference, and they were using Poll Everywhere in, in the plenary session. So we thought this would be a good eLearn topic to explore. Um, so Clint will be reviewing some of the pros and cons of Mentimeter, and Jessica will review Poll Everywhere. Um, within their presentations, we'll learn a little bit about the technical implications and limitations of each application and the value of utilizing this technology. Just a little bit about our speakers. Um, those of you, again, who were on the last eLearn call may remember Clint. He's sort of become our tech guru. Um, he's been in the media game for over 20 years, and we are happy and feel very lucky to have him on board the AETC train as the Interaction Designer and Media Specialist for the Southeast AETC, and we wish him well as he pursues his MS degree in User Experience Design at Kent State University. And we welcome Jessica to the Pacific AETC via the Bay Area and North Coast AETC partners. Um, she joined the AETC as a project coordinator and program evaluation coordinator a little over a year ago and is also a media specialist whose skills include website management and materials design, among other technical, creative, and analytical talents. So we want to welcome Jessica. And before we launch into the presentation and turn it over to our speakers, I thought it would be helpful to provide a slide uh, to review some of the nuts and bolts of what will be discussed in each of the presentations. So you sort of have a road map of what to expect during the demonstrations. So take a look at, um, take a minute and look at this slide, um, Clint's presentation will provide an overview, a brief overview. Um, he will highlight of Mentimeter. Um, he will highlight some of the unique features of Mentimeter, discuss the technical considerations, um, offer some tips for running the application, and share some best practices. Um, and and Jessica's presentation, she will also give a brief overview of Poll Everywhere. Um, she'll describe how to set up the polling, um, how to insert polls into presentations. She will offer some tips for presenters and best practices for utilizing the, and interpreting the data. So now I'll turn it over to Clint to begin the presentation. Sure, good afternoon, good morning, and 
everyone should now see my screen. Uh, we're going to talk about Mentimeter today. I'm actually running the presentation within Mentimeter itself. Um, and but we'll switch over and do some PowerPoint work as well so you can kind of see how these things uh, work together. So, all right. So really, I want to make sure that you, if, if everyone remembers anything, that um, ARS systems, I think, can be effective, um, but they're effective if they're promoting interactivity with the with the. Lab. We're actually looking at a study on that. Uh, implementation is easy. Really, you just have to think ahead a little bit. And the other thing is, it's really not for everybody. Um, it's not for every presentation. It's not for every presenter. But when used effectively, it, it can really enhance the talk. So first, I just want to touch on these two things. Uh, Jessica's going to really talk about the first one. Uh, Mentimeter does not uh, respond. You cannot submit responses via text. Um, and Mentimeter does not have, and I'm going to use this qualifier, great PowerPoint support. It does have PowerPoint support. Um, we have found that it is effective for a single presentation that has four slides that use interaction or less. When you kind of reach five or more, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft's uh, technical side of how their Office API gets really technical, but it, doesn't, it just doesn't really work well to have more than five interactive um, slides. Uh, so somebody has already um, given me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. While I'm doing the talk here, we're about to, to switch over to one other slide, and then I'm going to ask a poll question. Um, go ahead either on your phone or you can open up a new tab in your browser um, and go to menti.com and then use the code 618769 um, and uh, that will get you right into the presentation and you'll be able to engage with me as we go through this. So that'll stay at the top. I'll keep it up there. All right. First, I want to talk about the cost. Um, $20 a month. You get unlimited presentation unlimited questions, unlimited audience size, unlimited responses, uh, and that's really key. Um, it's all unlimited. At, and the $20 a month is their top tier. You can actually go cheaper than that, but why would you? As an educational slash nonprofit institution, you actually can get it for $179 a year. And, you know, <laughs> not going to lie, that's why we went with Mentimeter. It was, it was the cost, um, and you're going to kind of see how we make this work uh, in our environment. And so, but that's, that's <laughs> pretty good. All right, so here we go. First poll question. Um, again, menti.com, use 618769. What I'm going to do here is set up something I'm going to demonstrate later. So I do need a, a few responses as people are logging on. We have one from New England. I appreciate that. And uh, let's see, I could probably even, oh, well, four or five. You can kind of see the uh, responses coming in the lower right corner. It's really helpful. Um, I'm going to show you a little trick. I don't think I touch on it later. I can actually hide these results. So if this was a quiz or, a, you know, like a case conference and I don't want people to see those, um, hide them. And I can see that eight people have responded. And then I can show them again as, as the responses come in. So, all right. So we're going to go with eight. I'm good with that. That gives me something to work with. Uh, Mentimeter supports all major polling, interactive types of questions, multiple choice, word cloud scales. Uh, we're going to do some word cloud stuff. We'll do some image uh, choice. Um, Open-ended, we find very effective. Those of you who have given me either thumbs up, there's one thumbs up again, or a question, those are reactions. I can, uh, you'll see those as we kind of change too. Um, and then we have other things. Quick slides are what you're seeing here. This is not a poll. It's just an interactive slide very similar to how you would set up PowerPoint. And again, we're actually going to do that um, in a minute. Okay, so a couple cool things. Reactions. Now you could give me a heart or you could give me a cat. Uh, but this does kind of let people, you know, give a thumbs up, thumbs down. If there's a question, we can kind of actually see, oh, somebody has a question. Let me talk about this some more. Uh, another really cool thing is branding and templates. You can see I have the AETC logo here. I have a background that I use for uh, certain um, types of events that we do. So you can upload those. Um, 
and you, you can have unlimited templates and themes and color choices uh, for that $179 a year. Um, and then the other cool thing is segmentation. So I've got another question coming up for you guys. Uh, this, is, this is really just so that way I can demonstrate segmentation. But out of curiosity, which devices do you see participants using most during presentations? Mobile, pen, paper, or laptop? And let's just see kind of how this comes in. Mobile phones, one laptop. No analog responses. So I know that we've typically been having eight responses, so I'm going to go ahead there. Ooh, nine. Great. Someone else has joined in. That's, that's fantastic. So I ended this last thing saying you know, one of the cool things you can do is segmentation. Well, <laughs> hit the little grid over here, go up to segmentation and say, okay, under what region do you represent? I can now see, oh, okay, so New England, where are you all? I'm not seeing my orange. Um, green, mid-Atlantic, southeast. So I can actually go through Pacific is one vote most likely for laptop and two for mobile devices. You can segment your responses and kind of get a better idea of who's responding to what. A uh, use case for this would be, all right, so how many, you know, who here is an RN, uh, physician, an LPN, social worker? And then you could ask another question and you could segment the responses and you can kind of see, okay, all, all the physicians are using mobile devices and all the social workers are using laptops and all, you know, or you, you kind of get a breakdown of your data that way. It just provides a really interesting look. Um, this particular slide is also an image voting slide. Um, I'm going to bounce over here to another presentation that somebody did that I thought was really cool. Uh, this was something we did in Florida and what do you plan to do after the conference? Uh, most people are planning on shopping. But you could actually put animated GIF files in there. Very, very cool. All right, so coming back here to our presentation. Uh, a couple of other cool stuff. Jessica's going to talk about exporting results and kind of give some practical application for that. And then really something that we just started playing with and experimenting with and with great success is quizzes. So I'm really excited to do a quiz with you guys. Uh, quizzes are just a way to engage and draw people into your presentation. It creates a sense of competition. And when I'm describing it to our presenters, I describe it as um, a bar trivia night. So you go to the bar, you have a trivia night, and you know you have those like electronic ones where you can respond. The quicker you respond, the more points you get if you get the right answer. So we're going to do that right now. All right, so all of you guys on your phones should have uh, gotten a little notification. We've got some players. So you answer fast to get more points. You've got to get the answer right to get the points. And I'm going to start the countdown. I'm going to have 10 seconds to read the question. And I think I set this particular quiz up to 15 seconds for you guys to respond. So I don't know who's who here, but on your phones you should actually see that little uh, emoji and then a name that it's given you guys. All right, here we go. All right, we all ready? Which region has the most active resources available on the NCRC website? All right. Five seconds left. Three, two, one. South Central was the right answer. Good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> South Central, is that you guys celebrating? Um, all right. So, so, or is that just someone who got it right? All right. So, Liz, Nicole, Amanda, Renita, you guys all are doing great. So, we're going to go ahead and we will move on here. Let's see. All right. So, I've got another uh, interactive slide. This one's going to add, there should be three uh, slots for you guys to type in a reason for making presentations interactive. Why, what are the benefits? What are the reasons where doing this helps? So think of a word or two or three, a short phrase, and just type that into the, um, to the system, and we should start to see so engaging, engaging, engagement. It's kind of on the same same page so far. Let me give a, see if we can get one or two more people to put something in. Maybe. Better learning. Fun. Retention. 
Okay, good. This is this is good. This gives us. So my point in doing this is not just to show how kind of cool this is. Um, stats is great. Uh, it's very cool. And when an audience sees this, they are truly drawn in. They're like, whoa, it's doing all its thing. And it's really, really cool. Um, but this also gives me something to talk about uh, as we move forward throughout the presentation. So I'm, I'm going to talk about retention in particular and better learning. Uh, we've been talking about engagement. It, it draws people in. Um, but I really do want to address the retention and more engaging. Jessica is definitely going to uh, <laughs> words um, uh, talk about that. Okay, so let's just do some nuts and bolts here really quick um, with the implementation and the setup. Uh, what I typically do is I'm going to actually bounce over here to a – I'm going to do a – I start with a new presentation, and the presentation would be um, whatever the title of your event is. And this could be if it's one talk. Or this could be if it's a full, you know, day long. We actually did this for did this for a three-day multi-track uh, conference, um, and we had we had it running in three different rooms with hundreds of participants. But I usually just do an event because, and then I put all of the slides or all of the presentations in one event because then you're using the same polling code, the same website every time. And I'll do talk one, speakers. You know, name, et and then I'll quickly scan through their PowerPoint slide looking for poll questions, and I will just pick the poll that I want to do, uh, Q1, uh, A1, A2, I'm doing this all wrong because I'm just doing that, right? And now I can keep adding questions, and I'll do that. I'll just quickly copy them in, copy paste them in, and it actually goes really, really fast as I'm scanning through PowerPoint slides. Um, adding a new slide, this is going to be a word cloud, and my favorite word cloud, my word cloud. I can choose all my details, and I can do a new slide. And then when I hit a new talk, I'll just do next talk, presenter details. And the reason I do this is because it separates my slides over here on the right, um, or on the left, rather, sorry. Uh, so that way, as I'm going through, when this talk is done, I can ju and I hit next slide, it's the next talk, we're not seeing the old slides related to the previous talk. Um, that's how I set it up. Then I hit present, and when we're actually in the talk itself, let me just go to the slideshow, and we run it this way. So, oh, I hit my next slide. Actually, let me go to the right talk where I'm actually at. Um, oh, side note, really quick, Control-Shift-V is your friend. If you've never used it, or Command-Shift-V on a Mac, uh, Instead of Control V for pacing, try Control Shift V. It'll be a cleaner pace. All right. So we're running our presentation. We've got it running in PowerPoint. The presenter is doing their normal talk. They hit a poll question that I've already got in. I just Alt Tab over to my slides and hit Next, um, and we're good to go there. Actually, I did that demo a little earlier than this. So all I'm doing is Alt Tabbing between PowerPoint and Mentimeter. It happens really quick. I'm in sync with the, with the presenter. It does mean I have to listen. You know, that's one of the, one of the keys. Um, but you do it, you pay attention. When they hit that pull slide, you alt tab. Um, if, the, if the computer is going to be up on the podium and I'm sitting in the back, which is mo almost always the case, I'll just use a little Bluetooth keyboard um, and I'll control their computer. And then I also hook up a little you know, wireless remote that we all use for them so that way they can do their talk. Um, the keyboard is, this is the keyboard. It's got a little mouse, a little, um, you know, a keyboard, and I just alt tab using that. It works great. And our presenters have really liked just not having to worry about it. Um, and I'll hide the answers or I'll, you know, I just kind of guide it through. And um, even ones where we have had guest speakers come in where I don't have a rapport with them, it takes 15 seconds to let them know what's going on, and, and they tend to love it. So, all right. So I think I hit quiz time. That was my next slide. So here's our next quiz question. Are we all ready? All right. Ready. Yeah, seven players. Everybody, there's our eighth player. Great. All right. So I'm going to start the countdown. Oh, nine. Great. Here we go. Ready. Which region has the most visitors to the NCRC website? And go. I think I gave you guys 20 seconds for this one. 
you actually can choose how long you want the, uh, how much time you want to give the players. Five seconds left. We have nine. Let me try to vote. Oh, let me think of any votes. Oh, okay. Pacific. Oh, Pacific was the right. So somebody, somebody got it right. Aww, Here's the leaderboard. Nicole's rocking it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next slide. All right. So here's here's what I really want to talk about. This is this is this is the nuts and bolts of it. Okay. There are very very few studies that talk about the effectiveness of ARS systems. I found this one um, where they actually looked at nursing students and then they wanted to find out did the learning outcomes improve when ARS systems were in place versus just doing straight PowerPoint slides. The first one, is, the first highlight is what they did, multiple choice PowerPoint slides, audience response system, was, more, was it more effective than a lecture format using only PowerPoint slides? Uh, in comprehension and retention of pharmacological knowledge. The second yellow uh, highlight is no, it was not effective. It wasn't ineffective, it didn't hurt it, but it was not significantly different. It did show that 72% of the students um, didn't even miss not having a, an option to do that. Although 92% uh, of the participants who used the clickers felt that they would like to have them in the future. So what this tells me is that learners like using the system, but it doesn't actually improve um, retention. And that's important to remember. Uh, and I think the way you apply the system then maybe needs to change, or way, the way we do uh, apply it. Instead of just, here is a case, what do you think? OK, moving on. Here's a case, what do you think? Okay, moving on. The, the, I think the crux of it is to really truly use these as a way to engage the audience and then react to what's going on on the screen. Talk about it, uh, you know, respond to it, and use it as a way to draw people in. So I'm just gonna highlight a couple of those things that we do, that we do, and how we use Mentimeter.com to do that. Um, one, we hide results so we don't get crowd mentality. If I gave you four, like, which, which uh, site has the most visitors to the NCRC, uh, which location, and you started seeing who was responding, you just start following the crowd. I mean, we all do that. Um, quizzes, as you guys have seen, they're kind of fun. Uh, word cloud, new ideas emerge. We had uh, initially engagement, 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 and then a couple other ideas started to crop up. So it's really an interesting uh, way to draw out no new ideas. Um, I've got some great stories about that that I'd be happy to share, but it, it is absolutely true. Um, one of our best implementations are with open text types of questions. I'm going to do one here at the end. Uh, um, actually, I might skip it and just show you what it looks like just so you guys can see because it will be faster and give Jessica more time. Um, so for our plenary sessions, for some of this stuff, what cities you come from, so we had a talk on linkage and engagement to care. With a hundred some people in the in the crowd, it kind of got you know questions get unwieldy, and some people are are hesitant to raise their hand or respond. So we actually show a slide like this. It actually is blank. It's just free text, and someone can type in their question, and then the the responder or the the presenters can answer the questions, but it, it's anonymous. Um, an LGBTQ talk and religion uh, had great usage of this because we had some people that were really shy about asking some really sensitive questions, but they were able to pose their idea or pose their thought without, um, without, without feeling like they were being singled out. It was, it was, it's a great way to use it. Um, another way that we use this is by reinforcing ideas. So we'll ask questions like, what is your key takeaway from today's talk? Um, you know, and, and that all of a sudden what happens is someone saying, oh, well, from Clint's talk, I learned X, Y, Z, and then the other person sitting next to them is going, oh, I never thought about that. But they see it up on the screen, so it reinforces ideas in the talk. It's, it's a way to reinforce learning and to improve outcomes and, you know, improve the actual effectiveness by using engagement um, to see the increase in retention. Um, and a side note, just because I didn't know where to put this, the little tip, consider putting your 
evaluation, if you can make this work, it's a challenge because you have to export the data, which Jessica's going to uh, help us with, but you have to export the data and re-import it. Um, but consider putting the evaluation in because if my next slide was, how did Clint do? Would you do it again? What do you want to hear? And you just were answering those slides right here in the presentation, all of a sudden I would have eight, you know, 100% eval response rate. So just a thought, and before we move on, uh, I do have one more thing just so we can truly determine who wins this poll uh, quiz. We've got seven. You have a question? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, this is for Nita Flanagan. Yeah. Um, so with what you were saying with having like the evaluation like right then and there, so in a sense it's kind of more like that instant feedback versus waiting and hearing that feedback, correct? Yeah, and then if you are doing evals after an event, right? Um, and if you're tying them, you, <laughs> it is possible. If I put a question in here that said, what's your PIF ID? Mm -hmm. And then I put in the next question that said, on a scale of one to five, how would you rate? On a scale, and you can do scales. Now you're actually getting the eval back. Okay. Right here, that's that's what I mean by that. Um, I've seen, you know, depending on how well, the eval stuff, that's all kind of shaken out, you know. So we're, I'm 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 dancing around it a little bit just because we don't really know how that's I don't, I don't know how it's all going to shake out. But um, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Great. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start the countdown. I'll read the question. You guys will have 20 seconds to answer, and then we will move on. All right, here we go. W the NCRC has how many amount of prep resources on their website? 25 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 100, or greater than 100? What do you guys think? Hmm. Oh, three people have responded. Five seconds. One. Correct answer is, oh, one person got it right. We might that have is. a shake up here. <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. Okay, <laughs> Nicole took it. Great job, Amanda, Lori, Liz, wonderful. So what you guys saw, this <laughs> quiz went through my whole presentation, and it kept track of the points through the whole thing. Um, I didn't have to run them all together. I was able to do some slides, bounce over, do some slides, bounce over, and um, – that is that. I did put a, in conclusion what's your key takeaway just so you guys could see what that looks like. But you, you know, there's no obligation to fill this out. Um, I want to transition over here to Jessica. Let's see if I can figure it out. All right, so we good to switch over? Sounds good. I, yeah. I had nothing to do with Mentimeter. We just use it. It's a great service. Um, and full disclosure, we also use Poll Everywhere, so um, you know it's it's great. Um, do you? All right. So while they're transitioning, I just want to say that um, we may go over a few minutes. Um, so um, if you're able to hang on to the call for a few minutes after, um, we. would appreciate it um, so that we can finish up with um, Jessica's full presentation. Okay, go, take it away. Nope, no problem. All right, thank you, Clint. Um, I actually learned a lot about Mentimeter. It's actually a really awesome tool. Um, Poll Everywhere is very similar. Um, it's another way to engage your audience in real time. And some of the major differences are that Poll Everywhere has the option for texting, while Mentimeter is strictly web-based. So you know, we found that with the texting option, it really does kind of engage more people, um, just makes it a little bit easier rather than like signing online. Um, so also with Poll Everywhere, um, it's a little bit more expensive. So it can be up to $80 a month, while Mentimeter is, I guess, as low as $20 a month. And Bank tends to use, the, we use the free version, and so we get up to 40 free responses, which, you know, has been working great for us so far. Um, you know, we just find that that's like an okay sample size for what we're using. Um, another perk is that Poll Everywhere is easily incorporated into PowerPoint, Google Slides, or Keynote, while Mentimeter, you have to use their presentation software, which can be, you know, a little limiting sometimes. I'm sorry. Right. So, and what were the other ones? I'm sorry? 
I'm sorry, you, you were listing the, uh, for poll what you can use it under. I'm sorry, you said PowerPoint. What were the other ones? Yeah, it's Google Slides and Keynote. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, so then so basically, I'm just going to kind of walk you guys through um, how to prepare for a presentation. And so what you want to do is you want to log into Poll Everywhere, and you're going to set up your polls. So I'm just going to go into my polls. And I've already set up a couple here. And as you can see, um, there's different types, very similar to Men's Meter. We have, um, we have multiple choice, we have um, open-ended questions, and we have uh, the word cloud. And those are the ones that we tend to use the most. Um, but there's also other options. The Q&A feature seems to be really effective with engaging people that want to you know, ask anonymous questions. Um, so that is also an option. So as you can see here, I've already just been, I've just been doing some fun questions. And what you can do is you can easily customize it. So like here you can put, you know, you can choose your color scheme. I, I went with the AATC color scheme. Um, you can decide, you know, how you want it to appear, bar chart, column chart. Uh, you can even put a logo in the background. You can put pictures in the background. It's very customizable for whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, so that's that. And then the other thing that to consider, so since we use the free version and we use up to 40 responses, you kind of want to make sure that the setting is set. Um, so here you want to make sure that they can do it through the website or through texting. And then with the response settings, you want to make sure that, um, so let's say that you're in a training where there's about you know, 60 or so people. You might want to set it up so that each person only responds once. Otherwise, you know, you might have one person responding five times, and then you won't be able to get everybody's response, if that makes sense. All right. So we have that set up here. And then I'm just going to go back to my polls. And then I'm just going to add, create one more here. And so here's, here's where you see all of the options. And we already have a word cloud, and we already have a multiple choice. So I'm just going to go ahead and create an open-ended question. And I'll just do something fun like, um, what advice uh, could you never give up? Cool. So we create that here. And then one of the major things you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that it's live so that it's activated right here. That's the button. And I'll do the response settings. So we'll just set it at as many times as you like for this demonstration. <laughs> Joe Biden, all right. Cool. All right, so here I'm going to go back to my polls. I'm going to make sure that everything is activated. That's the number one thing um, that we find that can be challenging when you're inserting it into the PowerPoint. And then this one. So. Got it. Okay, here we go. Perfect. All right. So this should be working now, right? Here we go. Yep, great. Okay, perfect. All right. So now we're going to insert the polls. So you just you want to make sure that you've downloaded the Poll Everywhere app onto your PowerPoint, and that's really easy to do. It's just on the home page of Poll Everywhere, um, and then you should be good to go. And here we are. I'm just going to insert all of our activities. So are you? Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm just going to start going through a demo. And I'm going to have you guys all take out your cell phones. And I'm just going to have you text to 37607, um, Jessica Price 498. And if you, if you end up getting the version where you actually pay for it, you can decide which username you can use. But in this case, it's just my name and the number. Um, so I'll give you guys just a second to get in there. All right, hopefully everyone's logged in. And then we'll just go with the first question. So what vice could you never give up? Looks like Joe Biden is one of them. We'll see if we get any other responses here. Ice cream, another good one. Cool. 
So yeah, so as you can see, they just kind of pop up as you go. And with the open-ended responses, it's good because you can um, do more than one-word answers. Rather, with the word cloud, you just kind of, you're just focusing on those one-word answers. <laughs> Perfect. All right, cool. And then, so one thing that we actually have discovered that can be a challenge is if you're connecting to an HDMI cord through a, um, through a projector of some kind, and what can happen is the display will become really small and the audience can end up not really seeing it very well. And so in that case, we end up going back to the website and using the poll from the website. So those are some of the challenges that we have seen with the display. All right, these are good. So we'll move on to the next question. All right, so the tech engine light comes on. It's been on for six weeks. What do you do? And then in this case, this is multiple choice. You can vote A, B, C, D, or E. A being what check engine light. B, replace the entire engine piece by piece until it's fixed. C, take it to the shop. D, buy a new car. Or E, ditch the car and use Uber. All right. So what's kind of nice is that you can just see it you know, adjusting as people go, very similar to Mentimeter. Just a fun visual here. All right, we got a, yeah, buying a car seems to be the popular choice. All right, so we will move on. And then if you were an animal, which animal would you be? And so this one is on the word cloud setting, and so you can see it pop up as one word answers. Ooh, flamingo, I like that. Bird, okay. Panther, nice. Zebra, <laughs> I know <it's> that. <laughs> Great. And so similar to Mentimeter, it's just like as you go, if more than one person put zebra, you would see it starting to get bigger and it just, you know, it's a very effective visual for people. Panther, all right, cool. All okay, so we will move on. Um, so some overall tips for presenters, I would say it's really important to give, you know, clear instructions on how to participate up front. Um, one thing that I didn't mention, but, you know, it's always good to tell them that just regular text fees apply. Um, there are no additional fees and also that your answers remain anonymous. Um, that's kind of a good thing to disclose to the audience. Um, also, it's fun to do. It's good to do a fun icebreaker practice poll first. Make sure that it's working, um, and also good to slow down and allow for silence while people respond. Because sometimes it takes a minute for people to get set up on their phones. Um, another thing to keep in mind is to space out the polls through your presentation so that people still remain engaged and it doesn't become monotonous. And to mix up different types of polls. Um, another good thing is to offer an incentive or make it a game, give out small prizes, um, you know, just kind of make it fun. And uh, there's just a link to best practices when you're using Poll Everywhere in your presentation. All right. And then finally, I will go over. Jessica, there's a question um, in the chat yeah. room. I don't know if you want to answer oh, that. Oh, yeah, quickly. please. Just, Amanda's asking yeah, if no. you can how many people are participating in your poll? Is there a way to see that yes. as, you're, as you're navigating? Yes. Oh, to ask, she was asking the maximum number. Sorry, hold on. Yeah, so, oh, can you see how many people are participating in your poll? Got it. Um, yeah. So not in real time. So basically, once you have done all of the polls, you will go back to Poll Everywhere, and you can see all the data that was um, collected. And so once you get back there, then you can export and see how many people answered each one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. All right. Cool. All right. So moving on. So yeah, so how we implement this. So it's great to get all of this data, and then you're like, all right, now what? It was great in the moment, and you're like, how am I going to be able to use this? So once you go back, um, I'll just continue with this. So 
we recently had um, a major conference in the East Bay, and we had a lot of breakout sessions. And one of the breakout sessions was focused on how to get to zero in the East Bay. And Sophie Wong is our one of our faculty, and she was focusing, one of the major questions that she focused on were factors perpetuating disparities for young people of color and what people thought were those major factors. And so as you can see um, in this example, this is the handout we gave. And stigma was, it just stands out there, right? And so this was a very effective word cloud, and it just shows you know, what people are thinking of as the biggest factors. And we can use this data um, to, you know, further the initiative. Uh, and then other questions that were asked during this workshop were around the overall top goals and metric choices um, around getting to zero. So there were prevention metrics, there was linkage and retention metrics, um, and people voted on what they thought were the most important. And so as you can see in this, particular example, people thought increasing the number of people on PrEP by over 100%, along with increasing the percentage of people living with HIV retained with one medical visit per year to over 90%. Those were the top two um, metric choices in this group of people. So, you know, we used this data to further the initiative to getting to zero in the East Bay, and we found it to be really effective in engaging the key players that um, are involved with this. So this is just an example of how we've used Poll Everywhere to, um, you know, really kind of push forward a lot of our projects. All right. And then, <clears throat> so yeah, so some key takeaways. I would say the pros of Poll Everywhere are that it's very easy. You no longer have to use those ARS um, clickers that, you know, you'd have to log into trainings. I was fortunate enough never to have to use those, but I heard they, you know, they're a little bit more tedious. And, you know, all you need is a good Wi-Fi connection. Um, it's free up to 40 responses per poll. Um, and in our case, that has worked just fine for training. But if you are going to big conferences, you might want to consider um, upping the number of responses per poll. And, you know, we actually just discovered that UCSF has an account with Poll Everywhere uh, for you know unlimited responses, and so we're probably going to be able to get onto that account. So it's you know it's a matter of also looking at the resources that you might have at the university that you're housed at, um, you know, seeing if you can get on other people's accounts. And it's also you know customizable for your needs. It saves you time. You don't you know folks don't have to sign up or download an app to vote. That's also really you know easy for them. And then you have this live interaction with the audience. Um, some of the cons are that it is pricier if you go over 40 responses. Um, there's always the possibility of technical difficulties with any of these. You know if there's a weak Wi-Fi connection, um, it just doesn't insert into your presentation well. You know you're always going to have the option of facing that. And then you might lose participants who don't have a smartphone, but you know, let's be honest, most people have a smartphone now. So yeah, um, that is the overall summary of Pull Everywhere. Are there any more questions? There is some discussion Sorry. going, thank you, uh, Jessica. There are yeah. some discussions going on in the chat room. Um, okay. um, Tom Donahoe was asking <laughs> who to ask about the UCSF um, university account. Um, oh yes, yep. Cameron, yep. That's yep. correct. Oh, you can you can see the chat room. Okay. Um, yes, yes, we're good here. Um, yeah. And, oh, and then UCLA has one too. Cool. And yeah, it's good to have Did you notice Tom's question about um, the answer, the responses, um, possibly influencing? Um, other responses, uh, and if it can, the responses can be hidden. Um, and it looks like Clint res responded to him saying yes, they can uh, hide the responses until the presenter decides to reveal the answers. So, yes, that that, that is definitely an option. Um, when we've been doing it in the presentations I've seen, it's kind of cool to see it pop up in live time as people are voting. But there is definitely that element of. Um, influencing responses, but you do have that option depending on what you're looking for. So it's very customizable. Yeah, um, Clint mentioned that the, one of the cons is that the entire internet goes down. You know, we experienced a little bit of that at the um, Ryan White conference. I, I'm going to assume it was because of the the poor um, 
internet Wi-Fi connection that they had, so they did have some mm -hmm. difficulties um, getting responses and getting folks to sign in. Um, so perhaps that is an issue to con to consider. Um, yes. Knowing yes. where you're going to be um, doing this is a, is important, <laughs> and if they have the right, time. right, <laughs> exactly. And you know, in those cases, I guess you. Um, you know, you can always turn to the old-fashioned way of raising hands and that kind of thing. Right. But yeah, it's a good it's a good thing to run through at least ahead of time. Right, right. Make sure it's working. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm wondering, Clint, if there are any other major differences that you would want to bring up about Mentimeter and Pull Everywhere. You know, not not. Um, they're both they're both tools that accomplish essentially accomplish the same thing. Um, and right. I know, you know, Vanderbilt, ha I believe Vanderbilt has Pull Everywhere, um, an account as well. It's just bureaucracy, you know, yeah. trying to get, right, get, right. To get it. And, uh, so, yeah. But one of our use cases when, when we, we actually have run, excuse me, we have actually run both simultaneously. Where we had mm -hmm. our main projection was running Mentimeter and we would tab between the two. And then we had a separate projector running on a side screen that was running Poll Everywhere. And oh. that had a whole separate set of poll questions that were more overarching for the entire event. So we would ask a question mm -hmm. about the day or about a certain topic, and then people could free text in their idea. And this allowed us to not force people to switch between texting you know, to a different number or anything like that, they could keep a Mentimeter tab open, and then they could text for that. So, it, you know, they really oh, yeah. complement each other really well. Um, and don't be afraid oh, to, you know, don't be afraid to try it. But, you know, I, right. uh, my, my thing is all just being effective. You know, I, I, want, I want to see outcomes, and I think these offer a lot of potential. But a lot of it is so much dependent on the presenter and how they handle the question, how they handle the responses. One thing we've noticed is people do drop off throughout the day. You know, they stop responding, mm -hmm. and there's, there's nothing that will lose responses faster than a presenter not responding to the answers. Because then I feel like as a participant, what's the point? Why pick up my phone? They're not even going to do anything with my submission. Right, anyway. right, so exactly. There's, there's a tech yeah. Thing. Not everybody can do that, so, I mean, but, Okay. Yeah. We use it. We yeah, you want to make sure it's relevant to the presentation for sure. Yeah. Most definitely. All right. Any other questions? We're just a few minutes over our time. Um, mm -hmm. And if there aren't any questions, I'm going to request control. Oh, yes. About I'm turning point. Uh, <laughs> I, or turn, not turning point. Turning technology. Uh, I'm. I always just watch the clickers get handed out, and then the clickers get put back in. Um, so I don't know. I think they've got a cloud solution coming out, but I honestly don't. You know, I honestly don't know a lot about it. And as far as yeah, cost, my my assumption is it works exactly like these, and it just kind of comes down to the cost and what you know comfort level and things like that. Right. Right. Definitely. Tom, did you have a more specific question? Yeah, you're typing. Tom is typing. While Tom is typing, I wanted to let everyone know that Clint and Jessica are available if you do have further questions um, after the call. And mm -hmm. um, I want to share a battle. Oh, OK. <laughs> uh. um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, and, I'm sorry, uh, go ahead. is $15 a month for nonprofit educational institutions. I mean, the educational discount yeah, is that's, $15 a month. Yeah, that's, you it's can't beat so that. It's affordable, you know. Yeah. So you just have to, uh, you have to, it's the alt tab thing, right? If you're comfortable alt tabbing for $15 a month, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And, and if, you, if you don't need more, because you're absolutely right, 40 responses, that's going to cover you most of the time. Right. So. Yes. Yes, and we find that you know we we sometimes don't even tell the audience that we don't even tell them, hey, we're only going to get forty of your responses. We just still keep everybody engaged, even if it is a bigger crowd, and then we just get the first forty, and that's 
what we get, it's and people still feel yeah. involved, you know. <laughs> so, sorry, what did you say, Judy? No, I'm just saying then just just use what you have, the information you have. Yes, exactly. They don't even know. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, I don't want to rush you guys. I mean, if you're able to hang on and people are still asking questions, feel free. I just don't want to want to be respectful of everyone's time. But I just want to, again, point out that you guys have made yourselves available for additional questions and that our, we have moved the eLearn to a quarterly schedule. So our next call is in December. And as always, we are looking for new and thoughtful and engaging topics. So if you have any suggestions, please reach out. Um, and I guess mm -hmm. if there are no more questions, we can end the call. Um, Nothing? Okay. Well, thank you again to, to Clint and I have, I have one quick comment. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So the turning technologies thing, I called the um, Prevention Training Center, the TB Center, because we uh, I was just floored that they were charging $10 a clicker per year and for, wow. for the licensing fee. And, you know, we were sitting on about maybe five or 600 of them, which is a huge investment wow. that we've made. And so uh, I was battling with them that, like, you, you know, you can't do this. And I think what a lot of places don't know is that you can still use your old software. You don't have to upgrade to their cloud-based $10 per clicker per year system. And um, so a lot of the places are just storing them under their desks. They're, they're just kind of abandoning them and using, you know, these other things. But then fees start, click, fees start coming into play. So at some point I'm going to um, – wrestle with them more officially because I'm sure it's illegal what they've done because they gave us this, you know, we probably spent $12,000 on these and wow. we're told that they would always work, um, they would always work at no cost. So just to kind of plant that seed if others are interested in pursuing just, you know, um, battling them, which which I'm doing, um, to, to not charge the grandfathered in people who spent lots of money on these um, to have them contact me. Because, uh, I mean, we do use them and they do work well. I mean, once you get um, knowledgeable about all of the quirks. But, um, mm -hmm. but thanks for this. It's really informative. And Sandra, as you can see, has been correcting me in the chat room. <laughs> and we, I guess UCLA <laughs> has some of these licenses as well. So we'll, we'll be experimenting more. But this, we just made such a huge investment in turning technologies over the years. Amanda, are you on the line? Because it looks like you're going to join battle, uh, Tom yeah. in this battle. Well, with Amanda and Tom on this, it's just there's no. Oh, okay. Losing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one of our sites is paying. One of our sites in Arizona is paying the annual fee because they do tons of stuff with you know under 40 people, and they wow. have money to to spend it on. That's insane. It's insane. Yeah. We have events yeah, with 350 so people. So. Right. So how many? How many did you say? Three fifty. So uh, it's just not possible. Right. Right. Wow. <laughs> Nicolae says show up. <laughs> All right. You no, know, that's when you call her Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck with your battle, Tom. We'll, All right. We want to hear more Thanks about for this. It this, is, this is really helpful. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I guess I'll end the call here then. Any anything else? Thank you. Well, so thanks, thanks again, you guys. We look Thank forward to you. Thank you. Yeah, look Thank forward you. to hearing more from you guys. Thanks again. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. You too.